gentlemen, A Midsummer Night's Dream. What say you, Hermia? Do 
Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is. But at this time, wanting your mother's voice, the other must be held worthier. I would my mother look but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with her judgment look. I beseech your grace that I might know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to forever abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermione, question your desires. Know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether, if you yield not to your mother's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. So I will grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin pen up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day betwixt my love and me, either prepare to die for disobedience to your mother's will, or to wed uh, Demetrius as he would, or on Di Diana's altar to protest for I austerity in single life. Lent, sweet Hermia. <laughs> <laughs> and Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her mother's not to eat you this. So we have Hermia's. Do you marry her? <laughs> Your eyes are lone stars, and your tongue sweet, and 
inscrutable than lark to shepherd's ear. Sickness is catching. Oh, word favor so pours what I catch, fair Hermia. Here I go. My ear should catch your voice. My eye, your eye. My tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Were the world mine, Demetrius, being made to the rest I give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you love. And with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Well, that your frowns can teach my smile such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Well, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None. But your beauty were that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Helen, to our minds we will unfold. <laughs> Tomorrow night, through Athens' gates, we have devised to see you. And in the wood, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger company. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us. <coughs> And good luck granting thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. you. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. <laughs> How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens am I thought as fair as she. But what of this? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what call but he to know, and as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, things base and vile, folding no quantity, love can transpose of form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. Therefore, his winged Cupid painted blind. For ere he looked on Hermia's eye, he held out oaths that he were only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will not tell him of fair Hermia's plight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thinks it is but a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Here, Beard Quince, 
Boots, you must take the thisbe on you. What is thisbe? Some wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. <laughs> <laughs> Let me play this be too. <laughs> and, and I will speak for a monstrous little voice. This me, this me. Starlight sheen. <laughs> 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 
everlasting bench you wake and looks upon, be it on lion, on bear, on wolf, on meddling monkey, on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> Ere I take this trunk from upper sides as I can with another herb, I will make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I shall overhear their conference. <laughs>
<laughs> what thou seest when thou dost awake, do it for thy true love take. Love and language for a thing. Be it ounce, or cat, or bear, or barn, or boar with bristled hair. In thy eye that shall appear, when thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. <laughs> Tedious minutes 
I with her to spend. Not her, me, but Helena I love. Who much ain't a raven for a dove? The will of man is by his reason swayed, and reason says you are the word you made. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough, is it not enough that I can never know? Nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye. But you must flout my insufficiency? Good trot, you do me wrong. Good sooth you do in such disdainful manner me to woo. But perforce I must confess, I thought you, Lord, of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refuse could therefore of another be abused. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayest thou come Lysander near. And all my power could rest your loving knight, to honor Helen and to be her knight. Oh. Help me, Lysander, help me! Lysander? What? Remove? Lysander, Lord! What? Out of hearing, gone? No sound? No word? Alack, where are you? Speak! And if you hear? No? Then I will perceive you all not nigh. Either death or you will find immediately. <laughs> Thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for Pyramus and Thisbe, 
as you know, to talk through, through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, bottom? <laughs> <laughs> Some man or other must <laughs> present wall. And he, and he must have some plaster, some rough cast about him, to signify wall. <laughs> and he must hold his fingers thus. And through that cranny shall Pyramus and this be whispered. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. Reason and love keep 
What a company together now. Because <laughs> <laughs> so honest neighbors should not make them friends. <laughs>
sleep here and it's translated me. <laughs> If you were mad, <laughs> you would not use 
hearts when I know you hate me with your heart. You are both rivals and love Hermia and now both rivals to mock Helena. A trim exploit, a manly enterprise to conjure tears up in poor man's eyes with your derision. None of noble sort would so offend a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience, all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, so. for you love Hermia. This you know I am. <laughs> and here, with all good will and with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I do love and will do till my death. Never did Marcus waste more idle breath. Lysander, <laughs> keep thy Hermia, I will not. If e'er I left her, all that love is gone. My heart to her is as a guest wise sojourn, and to Helen is it home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, lest to thy peril thou abide it dear. Look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. My finger, my ear, I think it brought me to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay who love doth press to go? Ooh. What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him by. Fair Helena, more in guilt tonight than all you fiery oaks and eyes of light. Why seekest thou me? Could not this maid thee know the hate I bear thee may me leave thee so? You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy! Why <laughs> I perceive they have been joined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me? Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. <laughs> Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face, and make your other love to me, Jesus, who even now did spur me with his foot to call me in goddess, named divine and rare, precious, celestial? I understand not what you mean by this. I do persevere, counterfeit, sad looks, Make mouths upon me when I turn my back. Wink at each other. Hold the sweet jest up. This sport's well carried shall be chronicled. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul. Fair Helena. Oh, excellent! Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. <laughs> Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I will find my life by you, and I swear by that which I will lose for thee to prove him the ah. that says I love thee not. I swear I love thee more than he can do. I'll say so to God, prove it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where to tends all this? Away with you. No, no, he'll seem to break loose, but yet come not. You are a tame man. Go. Hang not, thou cat, thou bird, vile thing. <laughs> Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Thy love. Out, tawny tarts, we're out. Out, low medicine, pain and potion, hence. Do you not jest? <laughs> yes, do, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. Oh. I'll trust not your word. What, should I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, all harm her not so. What, can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me wherefore? What news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I am as fair now as I was a while. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then, you left me in earnest, shall I say. I by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, ye out of hope, of question, of doubt, be certain, nothing truer, tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. 
All this derision shall seem but a dream and fruitless vision. Was I in this affair to be employed, I will to my queen and beggar Indian boy. And then I will her charmed I release from monsters view, and all things shall be peace. <laughs> Here comes what? <laughs> Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, draw thee ready. Where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plainer ground. <laughs> <laughs> Good hand, sweet hand. 
I'm no coward. But I pray you. Oh, let none of your people serve me. For I have a great exposition of sleep. Come upon me. Sleep then, and I will wind me in my arms. <laughs> Fairies, be gone and be always away. <laughs> oh, how I love you. Oh, no, <laughs> Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her of late behind the wood, I did upbraid with her, and did fall out with her. And then, in mild terms, she begged my patience. And then I did ask her of her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy sent to bring it to my bower in fairyland. <laughs> I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And gentle puck, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he waking when the others do, may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce vexation of dream. But first, I will awake the fairy queen. As thou was one to be, see, as thou was one to be. <laughs> my Titania, awake you, my sweet queen. My Oberon, <laughs> what visions have I seen? Me thought, <laughs> me thought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hither to this wood, and I in fury hither follow them, 
fair Helena and fancy following me. But my good lord, I know not by what power, but by some power it is, my love for Hermia melted as the snow. It seems to me now the resemblance of an idol god, which in my childhood I did dote upon. And all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object and pleasure of my eye, is only Helena, to her, my lord. I was betrothed ere I saw Hermia, but as in sickness did I loathe this food. But as in health did I come to my natural taste. And now I do wish it, love it, long for it, and will evermore be true to it. Aww. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse you more will hear anon. Agia, I will overbear your will. <laughs> In the temple by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. And for the morning now is only born, our purpose hunting shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come to Paul. These things seem small and undistinguishable. Methinks I see these things with parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. <laughs> are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that it seems to me that though we sleep, we dream. Did you not think the Duke was here and that he bid us follow him? Yea, and my mother. <laughs> and Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then we are awake. <laughs> Let us follow him, and on the way we will recount our dreams. Didn't you call me a court? <laughs> Two or three lords and ladies more married. If 
our sport had gone forward, we had all good things then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
play, there is a <laughs> of ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But by ten words, my lord, it is too long. <laughs> which makes it tedious. And tragical, my noble lord, it is, for Pyramus Therinta killed himself. <coughs> Which, when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made my eyes water. But more merry tears, the passion of wild laughter never did shed. <laughs> <laughs> what are they that do play? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now. <laughs> <laughs> and now have toiled their unbreathed memories with the same play against your nuptial. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord. <laughs> I've heard it over, and it is nothing. Nothing. Uh, unless you can find some sport in there in tense. <laughs> I will hear this play, for nothing can be amiss when simpleness and duty tender. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness or charge and duty in this person's <coughs> perishing. Why, gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing of this kind. The kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. <laughs> Our sport shall be to take what they mistake, and what poor duty cannot do, noble respect takes it in might, not merit. Where I have come, great clerks have purposed to greet me with premeditated welcomes. Where I have seen them shiver and look pale, make periods in the midst of sentences, throttle their practices, practices in their fears, and in conclusion, dumbly have broke off, not paying me a welcome. Trust me, sweet, out of this silence, yet I picked a welcome. And, in the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much as from the rattling tongues of saucy and audacious eloquence. Love, therefore, and tongue-tied simplicity, in least speak most to my capacity. So please, your grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on, truth, truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. <laughs> <laughs> Would you desire lime and hair to speak better? Is the witty 
easiest partition I ever heard this course, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Here draws near the wall. Silence. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, grim look night. Oh, night with you so black. Oh, night which ever odd when day is not. Oh, night. Oh, night. Alack. 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 <laughs> I fear my misbe promise is forgot. <laughs> and thou, oh, wall. Oh, sweet and lovely wall, <laughs> which standeth between her father's ground and mine. <laughs> and now, oh, wall, oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thy cheek to blink through with my eye. Oh, courteous wall. Job shield thee well <laughs> But what do I see? No days me do I see! Oh, wicked wall! For whom I see no less! Curse be thy stones! For thus to see me! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
This is old Minnie's tomb, but where is my love? Run! Well, word, lion. Well run, this be. <laughs> well shown, moon. <laughs> Mouse lion. And so the lion vanished. And then came Eros. <laughs> oh, moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. <laughs> <laughs> I thank thee now for shining so bright. For by thy gracious, golden, glittering gleams, I trust to take my truest Thisbe's sight. But stay, oh, spite! But mark for night, what dreadful dull is here? Eyes, can you see? How can it be? Oh, danky duck! Oh, dear! <laughs> what mantle good? What stain with blood? Approach ye face. Come, come, cut the red and thrum. Quail, crush, conclude! Quail! <laughs> <laughs> this passion and the death of a near friend would go near to make a man look sad. <laughs> this sure my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore did his nature thou liest frame, since lying here at the vile my dear, which is no, no, which was the fairest day that ever did live, that loved, that liked. That looked with cheer, out sword. Come and wound the path of Pyramus. I, the left path, <laughs> where I doth lie. Thus, thus.
Amends. <laughs> 